Hello. This story is part of a series titled Coming to America. Dad was the type of person that couldn't bring himself to throw anything away. If anything broke, he would spend days, if not weeks, trying to repair it. And brother and I were always his helpers. It wasn't that he didn't have the money, he just couldn't bring himself to spend it. After moving to America and discovering the concept of a thrift store, it was like he had found a little piece of heaven. Welcome to Storytime with QMAX. My name is Keo Gigino, and this is my story titled, A Trip to the Salvation Army. I hope you enjoy it. May of 1976, Dad stopped by the front desk of the Way West Motel on Aurora Avenue North in Seattle to inquire about places to purchase cheap home furnishings. Dad was someone who watched his money and took pride in depriving himself on everything but the essentials and tools. The person behind the counter recommended something called a thrift store, a concept we were not familiar with at the time, but what would soon become a way of life for our family. I could sense the excitement in Dad's voice by the frequencies of his thank yous one for every word spoken by the receptionist, creating a melodic sequence, much like the back and forth sign of a two by four. If, thank you, you, thank you, drive, thank you, down, thank you, highway, thank you, 99, thank you. Within a few days of our arrival, Dad announced the home he had purchased in the Greenwood neighborhood at 327 Northwest 88th Street was sitting vacant. And the money we were spending on the motel could be used to furnish the house. The front unit was a 440 square foot, one bedroom house with a unfinished basement. The lot had a second, smaller one bedroom home that was still occupied by the tenant. I wasn't sure how I felt about this. In recent years, going on vacation with mom and dad was more about immigration than enjoying a holiday. It had come to mean visiting relatives and watching television until the cows came home. Dad was messing with our routine. On our first pilgrimage to the Salvation Army store on 4th Avenue South in Seattle, Mom insisted on coming with. When it came to home decorating, Dad's taste left a lot to be desired. Discerning taste was not something he had ever taken the time to nurture in himself. If it was functional, and priced right, it met his criteria. On the other hand, Mom had been waiting years for the promise of a move, and with it, a new home and decent furniture to take pride in. Dad was pragmatic, insisting the items from the thrift store were temporary, short-term, and we should take what we could find. But we all knew him better than that. Once it came home, it was there to stay. Dad did not believe in replacing anything, never allowing anything to be sent to that junkyard in the sky. If it broke, he would fix it, even if it meant having it limp along. The five foot two mother stood her ground, puffed her chest, and held her fists firmly by her side, ready for a fight. Dad cried uncle. Rummaging through the thrift store, searching for bargains, felt like visiting 100 grandma's basements. There was stuff all over the place. By the end of our visit, we had a mountain of items. It had been a long day, and I was experiencing sensory overload, like a kid in a toy store trying to choose just one present. There was a yellow Formica dining table with four chairs. Being first-time customers, the manager threw in the clusters of petrified food affixed to the chairs at no additional cost. There was a special on green couches lined with animal hair. Dad had me sit on one until the manager arrived with a hold tag. We had to find something to sleep on. Selecting a mattress for mom and dad was easy. The mattresses were displayed vertically on their side, like slices of Wonder Bread at a 50s deli counter. I flipped through about a dozen mattresses for a better look before finding one for mom and dad. Some of the mattresses revealed their personal histories by the impressions left behind. Others, I questioned why they were there in the first place. 
When it came to rollaway beds for brother and me, our choices were limited. Trying to find mattresses with the least amount of yellow decor seemed like the only option. There were three of them, and all were in pretty bad shape. The store employee told us they had been donated by a local hotel. You can't have paying customers sleeping on urine-soaked mattresses, he said. I wondered why brother and I were not afforded the same luxury. Mom found some colorful sheets, one yellow and the other blue, to cover up the stains on the mattress. She sprayed the mattresses with Lysol. It did little to put our minds at ease. Whenever laundry day rolled around and the linens were washed, yellow sunshine would simmer through as a reminder of what we were sleeping on. A set of dishes, silverware, pots and pans, eating utensils, a toaster, an alarm clock, and three TV trays were added to the pile. A black and white television with rabbit ears took a bit of coaxing, but Dad was amenable. A small reconciliation prize for what we had gone through. There was one item Dad went back and forth on quite a bit, humming and hawing, before he finally gave in. An old valet dolly with the label Waldorf Hotel, used for transporting luggage. Dad thought it would work for hauling heavy appliances and furniture. Eventually we learned the wheelbase was so small, if you tried to stack anything heavy on it, it would flip over. But Dad insisted we use the dolly and save our backs. We found it easier to carry both the appliance and the blessed dolly to keep Dad happy. Brother found his first bicycle for $30, not even caring that it was a girl's bike. It was affordable and it worked. That's what counted. After we brought it home, Mom took a turn riding it. I had never seen Mom ride a bicycle before. She said she learned how living in India. A small miracle took place on that day at the Salvation Army. The universe spoke, the clouds parted over Seattle, and the sun poked its head through. And Mom listened. Brother and I each got our very own thrift store bath towel, and no longer had to share the red bath towel we had all come to know so well. Our adventure vehicle was a 1965 Chevelle Deluxe Wagon with an underpowered six-cylinder engine, rusted out floorboards, dent in the passenger door, and a roof rack with peeling chrome. The roof rack Dad had salvaged from a junkyard. Dad did eventually cover up the holes with plywood, but for a few years there came the constant reminder not to push down too hard on the floorboards or we might go through. This would eventually become my first vehicle, the Kaomobile. After paying for and tagging all our treasures, we dropped mom and sister off at the house. Dad, brother, and I returned to begin the process of transporting items from the Salvation Army store to our Greenwood neighborhood home, 10 miles away. We made maximum use of the Chevy's cargo area with fold-down back seat and the tailgate down. Items too large to fit in the back were stacked on the roof. Dad was concerned about the couch denting the roof, and the roof rack did not seem well built, one he had installed. After loading the car and meticulously tying everything down with rope, we were ready for the first journey home. Rope tying with Dad was a story of its own making. On a good day, Dad was a slow driver. With the Chevy loaded, he went from using the accelerator to riding the brakes. Merging into traffic was always a challenge for Dad, requiring brother and me to be his third eye. Screwing up was not allowed. At regular five to 10 minute intervals, Dad looked in my direction and would call out, Son, please check the rope and make sure nothing has fallen off. Fine, everything looks fine. After the fifth or sixth time of Dad asking me to check, my inner wise guy surfaced. If something falls off, we will hear it, so don't worry about it. Don't be stupid, snapped Dad, giving me a sense of vindication as brother smiled. I figured out the best way to pacify Dad was to stretch my torso out the passenger side window and grip the rope with my hand. Then, at five minute intervals, tug on the rope and yell out, It feels tight! After two trips and five hours later of hauling stuff to and from, I had moved from sensory overload to plain delirium. For all our hard work, 
mom had a special treat waiting for us. A hungry man entree. Chicken was my favorite. We hooked up the television, pulled out the TV trays, and relaxed on the hairy couch. A second miracle took place on that day. Neither brother nor I had to stand next to the television and touch the antenna for the reception to improve. The image was crisp and clear with no snow. After a full day, I wondered what other great discoveries were there to be made coming to America. <laughs>